Hi again. I'm looking again at Hard Sayings of Paul by Manfred Brauch. He's dealing with a text that's of great interest, not just to Jehovah's Witnesses, but to all those who are of the opinion that Jesus Christ is part of the creation. This is, of course, the famous text, Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So in the first video, we'll deal with the first part of that sentence. He is the image of the invisible God. And then in the next segment, the firstborn over all creation. Brout says, Colossians 1.15, and the passage surrounding it, that is verses 15 to 20, is among the most important New Testament presentations of the nature and person of Christ. From the time of Jesus' ministry through the writing of the New Testament and into the centuries beyond when Christian thinkers hammered out the basic creeds of the faith, understanding the identity of Jesus Christ was a central concern. In answer to Jesus' question, Who do you say I am? Peter responds, You are the Christ. Mark 8, 29. Jesus acknowledges this confession as valid. And then, of course, he brings up the more famous text, Matthew 16, 16 to 17. But when it becomes clear that Peter understands Jesus' identity as Messiah in primarily political, triumphalistic terms, he's rebuked by the Lord, for the true Messiah must endure suffering and death. And from Peter onward, as evidenced in the pages of the New Testament, the identity of Jesus was revealed with increasing clarity and proclaim with increasing understanding and conviction. Our passage is one among several of Paul's responses to the question he asked when first encountered by Christ on the Damascus Road. Who are you, Lord? Acts 9, verse 5. These responses come to us in varied form and terminology, revealing various aspects of early Christian beliefs about this one, through whose life, death, and resurrection a new era had dawned. Neither for Jesus' original followers, nor for those like Paul, who became followers after Jesus' resurrection, was an understanding of Jesus' full identity there from the beginning. They grew in faith and knowledge as they searched the scriptures, that is our Old Testament, convinced that they bore witness to Jesus' identity. It is thus no accident that the confessions about him are steeped in Old Testament images and terms. The letter to the Christians in Colossae, written from prison in Rome toward the end of Paul's life, contains perhaps the most mature and complete response to the question about who Jesus was and is. The entire passage, which begins with our text, that is 115 to 20, Coloss contains more lofty affirmations about Christ than any other text in the New Testament. Our efforts toward greater clarity will concentrate on the two prominent definitions which are given, namely, image of God and firstborn over all creation. In the New Testament, only Paul uses the word image, that is the Greek icon, to designate a reflection, an imaging of a personal reality in another person or persons. In clear dependence on Genesis 1, 26 to 27, Paul speaks of man as the image of God and of the, the Christian as one who is being renewed in the image of its creator. That's Colossians 3.10. This basic biblical conviction that the human being in some mysterious sense reflects the reality of God becomes for Paul the basis for another use of the image metaphor. Christians are intended to be conformed to the image of his son. That is Romans 8.29. They shall bear the image of the man from heaven. 1 Corinthians 15.49 and are being changed into his, that is Christ's, image, according to 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Paul's belief that Christians are being transformed into Christ's image rests on two related convictions. The first is that the human creation, as image of God, is distorted by sin. Human life does not, as intended, reflect God's steadfast love and faithfulness, the essence of God's relational nature. The second conviction is that in Christ, the image of God is truly revealed and present. The glory of God is reflected in the face of Christ, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, because he is the image of God, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. That conviction is heightened in our text. The invisible nature of God has become visible 
in the incarnation for Christ is the image of God. What Adam, as a representative of all human beings, was created to be, but in the deepest sense failed to become because of sin, namely the image of God, Christ, the incarnate one, truly was and is. For Paul, Adam and Christ are representative of two orders of humanity, Adam of the original creation, Christ of the new creation. Adam of the creation marred by sin, Christ of the new creation, freed from sin's bondage. Therefore, what human beings in Adam were created to be, but failed to be in their lives, that is the image of God, human beings in Christ, who is the image of the true God, are destined to become. The second and more difficult concept of our Colossians text is that of Christ as the firstborn of all creation. The potential problem of this term as applied to Christ is the question it seems to raise about Christ's eternal nature. If he was firstborn, was there ever a time when he did not exist? So next time we'll take up that term, the firstborn of all creation. I'm linking to a video we did called Do Jehovah's Witnesses Proclaim the Image and Glory of God in Christ? 